In this video we're going to show you how the very important sheet called a change history is embedded into the packages that you create in Timer Pro. So you can see right here we're in the groupings and options show all detail. If I go to my groupings here it will change it to the grouping. So let's say now I want to create my package for the mold parts area. So I hit the right mouse button here. I go to the package. I say package station. I click on the OK and I'm going to find it in my uh, Timer Pro area. I'm going to go for my packages folder and I'm going to create the ACS demo folder. So I say ACS demo here and then click on the open up that folder and go say package. And it's going to go away and it's going to develop the package for us here. So it's just the same as we've seen in the previous videos here. But now we're going to talk about the sheet at the end here. You can see it's been put together called tp-changed here. So we'll let it finish. Okay, so now the process is complete. And I can just uh, select any item, double click on it. It takes me back to that particular sheet. Uh, my job element sheet for the setup here is the one I clicked on. Notice here there's a tp-changed sheet added here. And what it's doing here, it's listing all of the items that were added. So you can see here it says grouping, parts production, element using lever press added to mold parts. So mold parts is obviously the name of your uh, package. And we go to the parts production, we find using lever press has been added right here. So, and it goes on this way, it's showing you every single entry. So here's the, the two entries for the grouping uh, parts production. Here's the setup, three items in here. Telling you it's, and it's actually showing you what it actually added here. So if I go to the setup, then on my three items and so forth. So this is actually going to document everything that's been added or changed or moved within the package as you put it together here. So what we've done here is we've taken the oven process step here and we've actually created more typical work instructions. You can see here we've got some uh, different notes here and we've got some pictures. Uh, arrows and icons and so forth to represent what's going on. We've done that for both the prepare mold mixture and the insert in the oven and activate. Okay, so we've done quite a bit of work here to flush out the work instructions, pretty typical of what you might do. So of course you'd probably save that. And now we're going to look at what happens when we move some of the work content. So I might close out of this. And here we are back in our process. So we're going to close out of this. Now let's just say for argument's sake, the only thing I've created the work instructions for is my mold parts number one here. I'm going to grab my oven process and drag it over here and just move it into the center here. Let's say I move, put it in the middle here. Right? And then I'm going to come down here, hit the right mouse button, package, package station. And it's going to, of course, package the station that was on there, stack parts. And it's going to start putting it all together now. And as you watch this, you'll see the uh, pictures flashing at various points in time. And then we'll discuss what we see at the end. See it moving some of the pictures in here. Doing this all automatically without any user input at all. Now it's moved my mold parts here. You can see the top here has moved it from number one to mold parts 002 is the second revision now. So in this one case it's actually removed particular steps from the process. And now it's finished here. You can see what it's done. It's created a second revision of mold parts, number two. And the oven process has been changed here. So I double click on this. It takes me right into here. And now you can see my oven process has gone from the mold parts area. But in the TP changed area, it's actually made a copy of what it moved here. So it tells me here, grouping oven process, prepare mold mixture from move parts to stack parts is here. Right, and it's, you can see it here with all the pictures in here as well. At this point we're going to look at the stack parts operation here. You can see it here, the station stack parts. And we were dealing with the oven process. That's the grouping that was in the, the mold parts originally. So we double click on it. And here we see we're now in the stack parts, revision one of the stack parts. Uh, you can see we're on the oven process area. And you can see down here we've copied 
Pixel for pixel, all the pictures and the icons and the notes and so forth have been brought over here as we'd expect. It's also obviously appearing now in the cover sheet area here in between these two. If we go to the change history, you'll find obviously it's building up the uh, actual stacking parts area here. And here's the grouping for the oven process. Here you can see it says element prepare mold mixture was moved from mold parts to stack parts. And here you can see a copy of that. And here's the second one. Insert an oven and activate. It's moved from mold parts to stack parts, including all the pictures, the icons, and the arrows, and so forth. So it's a complete log of everything that happened uh, when it was creating this particular uh, revision one of the stack parts right here. Now we come back out and we look at revision two of the mold parts. Remember the first revision contained the or original documents that we put in there with the pictures and so forth. And here you can see obviously the oven process is missing here. It's not available down here in any of the job element sheets. We've got the part production, the setup, and the cleanup, but not the oven process. But now if we look at the TP changed, we can see what's changed. And it's telling us again that the grouping oven process element prepared mold mixture moved from mold parts to stack parts. So here's another copy of it in that uh, first station there. So what it's doing here is preserving a complete revision history of everything you move around between the different stations in your assembly line. And this can save you just a huge amount of manual effort. In fact, it's fair to say you probably would never do this if you had to do it manually.